Good morning. Today we're going to take a look at what it takes to make a chatbot be able to save and load files using a JFile chooser. So as you can see right here, I have my GUI chatbot right here. If I click on some information here, my text field, I type to it, I hit chat, we have a quick response right here. As you can see right here, I've got some stuff going on. I have uh, some quick little uh, blurbs right here. I have some keyboard mashing. My hello, my name is Cody, asking if I've seen Doctor Who. And I'm going to say yes, of course. And hit chat again. So, oh, is it time to say goodbye? No, but it is going to time to pause for this. And we're going to make it right here so we can save that file. So I'm going to click on the save button right here. It brings up a J file chooser so we can actually use this. I'm going to choose the directory I want to save it to. I'm going to go to my documents folder or desktop folder this time. I'm going to hit choose save on that. It's going to automatically build a file for me in this by hitting the save button. And it says my chat has been saved. To verify that save, I'll click on my load button. I'm going to again go to my this time. I'm going to go to my desktop folder again. I'm going to grab that latest file right here at 11.09 a.m., click on open, and boom, there's the information I just created. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code that it, we use to actually make this happen. Here we are inside the chat panel class. The chat panel class is where all the work is going to be happening. So let's take a look at the actual method that does the major work of the file chooser that we're using with this. It's a little helper method called get path that takes a string choice as a parameter. And what we, we do is we start off with the default path right here of dot, which refers to the current directory that our program is currently executing in. So this is most likely the um, workspace folder or the folder your Java homework is residing in. And so that's talking about where we are right now. I then set a result value of negative 99. The reason we're using that is because we want to give a nice default value so we can explicitly assign a variable to be something that we know what it is. But at the same time, we want something that's not going to be used by Java itself for one of its constant values we've seen in just a moment. I then create a JFile chooser object called file chooser, again using a variable name that makes sense. It refers to what we're talking about so I know exactly what I'm working with. I use the default constructor right here with no parameters. That means it's going to automatically choose the home directory of the current user. So in Windows land, it's going to be the um, My Documents folder. And on a Linux box like a Mac that I'm working on right here, it's going to be the um, home directory, aka tilde, that you normally see by accessing the home path of the user itself. Based on the parameter right here, choice, if, I'm cho if the value of that is save, I'm going to go open the save dialog. Otherwise, I'll use the um, open dialog and go from there. And so if we go in the save dialog, as you can see right here, I set the file selection mode to JFile chooser directories only, which means I'll only be able to look at the directories. I won't be able to select anything besides a folder as part of this thing. And so it's just a nice little way to immediately restrict us to only pick the folders only inside wherever we're looking at so I can actually choose the path for that. Because when I use my um, IO controller class up there on the left, I, only want, I want to actually dynamically build my file name based on the current time and what I'm using it for this right now. On the result value right there, I then now assign result a new value. This is based off of what is inside from file chooser that show save dialog passing it this as a parameter. So what that's going to do is it's going to open up the actual pop-up window that allows me to go through and choose where I'm going through, click on browse through all the directories, whatever, get all that done, and then get that result that I click on, assuming I press the, either the yes, the cancel, or the one of the closing windows in the corner of the box. And so whatever I click based on that, that's what's gets stored in result. Either I clicked OK, save, or cancel, or the X in the top corner will let me get out of choosing that. And that's what's stored there. It's not the actual path. Right there, that path is stored in something a little bit second that we'll look at in later. However, the, this parameter right here, I want to make sure I address that. This is talking about this current object, in this case, chat panel, where it says, I'm going to have this pop-up window show up inside my frame inside my panel so it actually says, oh, this is where I'm working with. I'm talking about this thing I'm talking to right here, not somewhere else, another monitor, another part of the screen down here out of, out of the way. We want it to actually show up for the actual project we're working with right now. Now, again, going back to result, we want to see if the result is attached to the, is the same as the JFile chooser approve option, aka said yes. Okay. If that's the case, then I actually want to build my path from that. And so I'm going to reassign into path instead of dot, I'm going to say file chooser dot get current directory dot get absolute path. And again, when we're talking about absolute path, let's say, for example, the latitude or longitude for your pl uh, place on the planet Earth, your mailing address, your street address to get to your homes, or your classroom number, and what row and uh, seat number you're sitting on in your classroom. That's your absolute path. That's exactly how to get to where you are right now. In the case of Harry Potter, it's under the stair, uh, covered on the stairs in uh, Little Winking. Oh, hey, that's his absolute path. That's exactly how to get there. Uh, number four, Privet Drive. We know exactly where that is. It has a path on how to get there exactly. A relative path on the other hand would be down the street, up by Kelsey. Go around the, um, take a trip around the block and go see that guy um, over there. That's a relative path. You have to know exactly what's going on in that. That might be good for something internal to a project, but especially when you're talking about saving files or opening files, retrieving something from a place outside of the current directory that you're at, it's almost always best to use the absolute path for this. My other option is the I didn't want to save, I want to open a file. 
And so if I'm choosing to open a file, I'm gonna go over here to File, Choose Without Show Open Dialog, again, passing that this is a parameter, and again, I'm using that same if test if result is equal to file choose or approve option, which means yes, I have the right file. If that's the case, however, my path is no longer going to a current directory. My path is gonna be going to the selected file and get its absolute path. So I get the path to that actual file that I want to open. Either way, if I go through saving or opening, once I get that path value assigned, I'm gonna return that path. So I have the default path just in case I chose something else. I hit escape, cancel, whatever. Or I have the path to the actual opening uh, file I wanna save or the path to the file I want to open. I get that path and I return. So let's see how we actually use that. So I'm gonna go down here to my setup listeners and I have my save button and load button both have action listeners attached to that. And I just call the get path passing at save or I call get path passing at load and I use the save text or load file method to do the work of the IO part of that. And that's what we can see inside my other video when we're talking about how to use um, saving and reading files from text. But that's not what we're looking at today. Today we're looking at the actual GUI components and how to make that happen. So let's go take another look at that and see what goes on as we do this. So let's go back to the GUI. Here we are again inside the GUI. As you can see right here, I have my name is Cody asking if I saw Doctor Who and it's the time to say goodbye. And let's go ahead and type goodbye to this and hit chat. And then, hello, what is an Octokitty? So I have a clear um, set of information right here. So what I want to do is I want to actually save this information. So I'm going to choose Save. It brings up that pop-up window. Again, as you can see, it's centered right here inside the J frame and the J panel I'm working with. It talks about the panel itself. It's centered right within it. Again, because I'm using the default constructor, you can see it took me to my home directory. I'm then going to choose a folder inside this. In this case, I'll choose my desktop. I'm going to go to my desktop and that gives me an option to save this and that's where it's going to build the file as you can see that's based on some information right here stored on the bottom of that thing and then appended with the chat save.txt. So I'll choose that and hit save right there, boom. It says my chat is saved. Now let's go ahead and verify that it worked. I'll go to my load button, brings up again a new J file chooser, but this time you see that I have, a, I can click on actual files as well as folders because I didn't choose to do directories only this time. We're going to go to the desktop again. And notice I have a new version right here at 11.09 p.m. I have 11.15 a.m. So I have that newer version right here that I can pick up and open. I choose open on this and look, here's that hello, what is an Octokitty? That last line we just uh, saved from our file, saved with this right there. So again, let's take a quick look at how we actually made that work inside our code and take a look at that overall. We have our get path method. If I choose save, it brings up the pop-up window choosing uh, directories only, which means I can't select any of the files. I can only click on folders and click through them. If I choose OK, then it's going to give me the absolute path. If I choose, um, and it assigns that path and returns it. Otherwise, if I choose the open method, I choose the, um, that for approve option and get that same path. Now, if I go over here and I go back to my app and I go to load, and I choose a folder and, um, and I hit cancel, oh, it, it gives me a pop-up message saying it's a directory. It doesn't close my app. It just says that's not something I can actually save to and resets to where I can go back and continue my process. So it's a great way of handling that because I'm actually using some error handling inside my project. Another thing we'll look at another time. But we just use that git path and it gives me that dot directory because dot is just a folder, which means, oh, I hit cancel. Dot is a folder. I can't open a folder and turn that to text. And that gives me, that handles that, brings it back, and that's the path that's returned because I did not choose approve option. So I didn't reset my path. It left my path there at the dot, which doesn't allow me to actually open that file. So again, that's the basic process that we have right there. If I were to go to the same thing and choose the path on the dot for that to choose file save, I'm going to go over here, go back to my app. I'm going to hit uh, to sample and hit chat. Did you see Doctor Who? I'm going to hit save at this point and I'm going to hit cancel. So I have that saved. Let's go ahead and look at my current directory of that using Finder. So I'm going to go to my Finder window, go over here. I'm going to go to my projects, so go to my documents folder. And inside my chatbot project, I have my file saved today at 11.17 p.m. And look what we have right here. Sample, did you say Doctor Who? Because it goes to the default directory using the dot operator right there. So I have a great way to save or load that. It handles it right there inside the code. So either way, even if I choose an option that's not exactly helpful for my save, I still get that file saved. It doesn't crash what I'm doing. Even if I hit the cancel, but I can still save directly to my project. So I have an actual path that I can have get, um, get access to and make this code work. So again, the get path method I use to create a file chooser allows me to either save or load files using that built-in component inside Java's Swing library and makes it so I can save text very easily. Again, for more information, take a look at my last uh, latest video on how to do um, file saving using static methods in Java, and have a great day. Thanks.